Welcome to the Real Estate Entrepreneurs Podcast. Welcome to the Real Estate Entrepreneurs Podcast. Today, we are at the Investor Lift Mansion. You can't see the man, but he's sitting on the side. Our friend Robert Wensley um, did the honors of having us come here and, and, and do a little bit of shooting yeah. with my friend Max El Cerrador Jimenez, guys. What's up, everyone? We're doing this one in English this time. <laughs> the first time we did it was in Spanish. We did do one in Spanish. That was a while back. So that was it, back it in was 2019, man. Yeah. 2019. This is that was. three years ago now. Yeah. Um, bro, first and foremost, my team loves you. I don't know. I've told you this a bunch <laughs> of times, but I want to make sure that we put that on, on the record here on, on yep. the podcast. And... Um, they, I think it's Thursday at 10, 10 o'clock in Arizona time. Yeah, right? so yeah, we have the show, The Closers Lab, uh, Talk to Sellers Live every Thursday, 10 a.m. Arizona time. Yep. How did that come about? Like, yeah, that's uh, interesting. So that show was an idea last year, obviously, like everything, right? The story brand or the book. Right. Um, so it was an idea, and we went back and forth on how we were going to do it. We weren't sure if we were going to just break down deals or talk to or do that the live calls because you got to understand when you're doing live calls there's a lot of stuff that can happen and go wrong right right and sellers don't answer phone systems go down so so we looked at what's the most benefit people can get now because we have a sales training program we put two and two together why not show instead of just teaching people sales let's show them how you actually apply so that's what drove us to go that way instead of the breaking down the deal aspects of what we Got it. So, and so yeah. So it's more driven on how you should, how you actually do the calls, right? Correct. Right. Yep. Yep. How um, we use our our sales process, you know, and, and how we implement it, and how we use it every day in our business. You know, it's funny. Uh, a few weeks back, uh, Caesar comes to me and says, "Hey, man, have you ever seen Max <laughs> on the phone making phone calls?" And I said, "Yeah, I've seen him." Like, man. He's so good. I'm going <laughs> to get the whole team to watch him, right? So now on the calendar, in our calendar, they got it blocked off at 10 o'clock Arizona awesome. time. They're watching you live on Facebook and they're like, they stop. They don't, they're not doing anything yeah, during yeah, that yeah, time. They're focused. Learning from you on, on how you handle nice. you know, the conversations and objections it. and all that, right? I so love it. Awesome. Thank you guys for that. Oh, my. We, we <laughs> bro, thank you for it because that's, we're literally getting free trade, here, you know, through Facebook. You know, it's you know what's funny about that? We had uh, some couple, a couple people that are on our sales training and they, they messaged me and they're like, well, if Mass continues to do these, I think I'm just going to get off our, I'm, I'm probably going to quit Disruptors. And I said, and so I use, I use my sales training, right? Because we're always in sales mode. It seems like you're frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. So Tell me a little more about that. How can we help you? And honestly, I wouldn't drop off. I actually yeah. would want more. Yeah. Because. So you're right about that because there's two aspects of learning sales, right? Which is the, the books and then the application. So if you're just going to watch the application of it, yes, you can learn techniques and you can learn how to say certain things. But the, the, the other side of it is where the implementation of the sales process. I think that's maybe where you're heading with that. That is correct. Yeah. Because, yeah, you can you can mimic somebody by watching them, right? Yeah. But in reality, do you actually know what that person is using psychologically yeah. to you know to, to engage with the with the seller or with the buyer yeah. or whoever you're negotiating with? And it's the application to the steps to the sales process that you guys teach. Yeah. Um, and if you if you're if you're on their program, I would not drop off. I would just extend it <laughs> because that's what creates that consistency and and, and the uh, engagement on on getting better. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, you can see the, the 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 one hour, which I highly suggest everybody to log on on 10, 10 o'clock. I think this is the fourth time I said ten o'clock Arizona time. Max, Max is on the dialer, literally just dialing and analyzing properties live. Yeah. Um, you're doing ARVs. Yeah, doing ARVs. Running comps. Yep, running comps. Talking to the seller, yep. handling objections, making offers. Yep. All in live. All live. All yeah. live. All live. Yep. You're making mistakes. Yeah. Because it's live. It's not yeah. scripted. Yeah. One thing that I always that I don't hide is that is the mistakes, right? Yeah. So I'll get a bunch of comments, a bunch of uh, questions. Why did you say this? What did, you know? How come you or how come you said that? And I'll answer them. I say, hey, that's a very good point. Uh, I, 
you know, I probably should have said that, right? Yeah, but this is not perfect. No, no, I mean, of course, it, yeah. it's real life scenario, right? Yeah. Like, it happens to all of us. Yeah. Yeah, how many times could I change my conversation with a seller that went wrong? Yeah. Because I approached oh, it from, from the wrong aspect of making yeah. offers or creating exactly. a report, right? So, that's the, the one thing I like about it is that you, you're you legitimate on it. Like, mm -hmm. there's no script. No. You're flowing on your own. Yep. And, and you're showing it as it is, which is something that we lack about today. Yeah. You see the end result of success. You know, you guys are like successful. You have a, a great operation. You have a podcast. Uh, yeah. You know, all there's all these great things going behind you on your education business, but you don't see how people don't see how you got there, yeah. which is the struggles when you got hung up on the on the, on the call when the yeah. the center cuts you out. Like we all get cussed out, guys. Like, I mean, if you're not getting cussed out, you're doing something wrong. Yeah, right. No, <laughs> <for sure. laughs> you're offering too much. You know. Yeah. So all right. So let's let's take it back a little bit to like the the progression for your operation you were telling me earlier uh by the way we had pre-podcast breakfast where yeah. we kind of like caught up with a lot of stuff that then mastermind had, yeah it was a literally a mastermind we were exchanging a lot of information um you your team has grown in like two different units i would yeah. say right mm -hmm. how was that how has the change been because People just think that people just spit out tips like, oh, I got a team and I'm good to go, right? Yeah. Like, no, you got ups and downs. And so how has that change happened from, you know, I would say 2000, pre-pandemic? Yeah. Uh, what, is that, what does that look like? Yeah. So uh, one thing I want to highlight what you said was a lot of people, um, what they do is they fall in love with the end result. Right? Yeah. And, and our business, I fall that because we show that end result, right? Yes. We show the outcome of it. To a certain extent, show the um, checks. Yeah, show the checks, right. the Lambos, whatever the case may yeah. be, right? Or it's not fun. There's, nothing, mansion, there's right. nothing wrong with that. I mean, I no. love all that. No, stuff. that's what we're yeah, doing yeah, for, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, if we're not I doing it, I think I told Robert, I said, "All work and no play, you, could, uh, you become dope." <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, it's like every business. I think you have to. When we first started, it wasn't like that, right? Anybody who wanted to work, make calls, come on, come to the office and you, open door, open door, right? But then it became more of babysitting and, 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 and basically challenges with people that weren't committed, right? right? So as you grow and you start to focus down on what you want your business to look like, you tailor now, you start to reduce, you, you stop doing that and then you get more niche at hiring, right? You get it, and then th that, that growth comes by joining masterminds too because we couldn't do it on our own without you know, right. mastermind proximity, to proximity to what other people are doing in their business. I mean. That's been the biggest change is the networking, right? And we've learned so much from other people, um, you know, and, and masterminds and stuff. But so we, what, what happens? We grew, and then we started to, uh, you know, obviously you got you got to know what your business, what you want your business to look like, right? Right? Like your business totally looks different than ours. Oh, yeah. you know, you're completely virtual. Yeah. Uh, we're not. We're not completely virtual. We have an office, but but it's because we need a gym. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just have a gym in there. We have a gym in the middle so, of the office. So I guess that would be my first. That would be my first thing is what do you want your business to look like, and what results you want your business to generate. Right. So uh, we still have in house, um, and then there's a lot of books you can read. I mean, one book that helped a lot was uh, Who Who Not How, right? That helped to hire a sales boss. So that helped on the management side. Uh, how to structure a team culture in sales, how to, how to, uh, how to uh, what is it called, hold people accountable with their KPIs. Because right. there's different ways that you can approach of uh, holding, holding a sales people. You know how it is with sales people. Yeah, yeah. You gotta entertain them. There's gotta be some goal they always gotta Once get. they lose uh, the, the drive, or, or the, I guess the wanting to be in there, they, yeah. they're gone. Yeah, and one thing that we did that helped us out a lot was, um, we, we match their, we have their goals, right? We have the company's goals, but then we talk to them as what is your goal? Ricardo? Personal level. Yeah, personal level. So you wanna buy your mom a house, you wanna do this for that, you wanna do this, you wanna do that. So now when we go and talk to them about their, their uh, production, it's like, hey, Ricardo, I thought you wanted to buy your mom a house, what's going on? You didn't make 100 calls today. Yeah, exactly. It's not more of, hey, what's going on? You know, We didn't bring in any revenue from you this month. It, the conversation's a lot different. So. Long story short, those things help to develop a culture. Um, so we started to build a culture now. We have a culture now where our guys are, you know, 
In our business, if you can have a sales guy stay for six months, you're lucky. You know what you know yeah. right? Yep. <laughs> uh, we all suffer from it. So. <laughs> so we've been blessed enough to, the guys that we have, they're going into a year and a half. Wow. Because we've been able to create a culture where, you know, there's an upside for them to become also, we have a, our goal and, and, and our, our vision is what's called uh, million, making millionaires, right? Yep. And that includes people that work with us. So we have a model where you don't work for us, you work with us. With us. Yeah, with us. Um, so that's helped us out a lot, and people buy into that, right? You know, the saying is that, you know, they don't just drink the Kool-Aid, they're swimming in it. So, and so we have the wholesale side. We, we really, we're running high level on that side when it comes to culture and it comes to work ethic and all that, you know, from our um, core values. And then we have the other side, which is the education, the podcast, and all that. So we're, that side's are taking off too as well, where people are buying in. So. I think that's really what it comes down to, uh, to be able to have, have a successful team and, and try to have some success at the end, because you can't do it all by yourself. No, no, you, you can do only so much by yourself, yeah. right? I, I remember sometime in 2018, 19, I was going through a lot of changes because I came from being a heavy flipper, rehabber, yeah. into wholesaling. And because I was when I was rehabbing, I didn't need a, necessarily an acquisitions team or a dispositions team. Yeah. I was the buyer. I mean, we were the buyer, Dennis and I at the time. And we kind of like both handled all the acquisitions and dispositions. But when I quit flipping, I continued to go down that route because I needed money. I was so freaking financially devastated yeah. that I needed to make as much money as I could 100%. Yeah. So I wasn't hiring people to, to pay like an ax or, a, you know. Yeah commissions and all that. But at some point, I remember I had like 30 properties on the contract. I had a lot of money on the pipeline, but I mean, I was exhausted. Yeah. And I was just looking at that board. I, I'm, I'm a very visual person. I have these whiteboards yeah. all of Like you go to our office, my no, office all whiteboards. Yeah. Yeah. We got whiteboards <laughs> everywhere, right? And I remember a guy, uh, his name is Alex Velasquez. Shout out to Alex. Uh, he came to my office one day and he said, dude, yeah, all those properties on the contract. Um, and I said, yeah. How the hell? Like, this, this, you got like 30 of them. And we had like six, $700,000 in assignments to collect. And I said, yeah, I got it. But man, I'm just having a tough time moving them because as I'm moving properties, I got to go acquire more. And so he came on board as a full dispo manager and he started selling them right, left and right. And that's when I started, okay, I got to scale this thing with people now that yeah. do all the work. I just got to, share the pie yeah. that way I can uh, Robert was mentioning earlier the the, the cash flow conversion yeah. moves quicker yeah. yeah I make less money but it's more money coming in and now it's, it's growing um, faster right yeah. so you, you know doing this by yourself you can't get started and do it all yourself yeah but at some point I read a comment on Facebook yesterday from a friend of mine in Tampa, Florida. His name is Walter Amarelo. Shout out to Walter too. He put something like, wholesaling is a dead end job. It is for those that cannot scale yeah. and delegate. Yep. If you can scale and delegate, which is where you are right now. Yep. I want to get into that uh, sure. in, in a minute, right? Uh, how was that process for you guys to to have your in-house team that goes in and out every six months. Because the problem is you get a good team yeah. and you start killing it, pat, 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 and they're all locking it up and they're, they're selling deals and you're making six figures a month, right? And these guys are getting paid very well. Yeah, yeah. But now they learn the trade as well. And some of them are like, hmm, maybe I'll go do this on my own. Or maybe some of those guys don't cut it yeah. for some reason, core values, you know, whatever right. the case might be. And now they leave and now you're like, oh man, I just lost a good guy or yeah. I lost a bad guy, thank God, because this happens yeah, a lot, right? <laughs> Those come around too. But then you're like, I got to retrain a new person and now your production drops, yeah. which happened to me. I was, I was shut down in between November and I would say February. Yeah, yeah. We made revenue, but it was very minimal. And we were going through that transition, right? Yeah. That we went virtual now. Now we went to a virtual team that we had a I mean they've been with us most of them for over a year now, but they were VAs only. Right. And then we realized, hmm, wait a minute, these VAs can do 
do a lot more than just text. Oh yeah. Lead generate. Yeah. And we start empowering them. Hey, go negotiate the property. Yeah. And then we're like, hey, go sell the property. And and now that's we're like, whew, this this car is running on its own. Yeah. How is that for you guys? So especially you say that about wholesaling is a dead end job. I um it could be. It's a rat race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a rat race. You, you, you but sell also, it? you can get to a point where it can be cash flow as well. It's an ATM. It's, it's an ATM, right? Because if you can build it to where it's automated, systemized, right? Systems like Investor Lift, yeah. right? Where we can, where we're making extra money. Uh, you know, you, you and, and you know, with our JV nation. Now that we're nationwide JV, and that's another revenue. Another income, income stream. Yeah. So as you systemize, and 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 obviously systems are just systems. At the end, you also have to have the people behind it. So the same thing with you, when, what we saw on, on virtual assistants, we have uh, eight or nine virtual assistants in the Philippines that are all operations. They don't do texting, they don't do cold calling. And what they do is they run basically all our, they're, they're our marketing today. director, our day-to-day -day stuff. No one in our office touches any of the marketing. Uh, they don't, they don't uh, they're not in the CRM all day making sure our guys are calling. Uh, they're in the, they're the ones in the back scene that are doing all that work, the marketing, uh, uh, segregating the list, sending it to the cold callers, uh, giving us the report at the end of the day for our, for our, for our acquisition guys. So that's helped tremendously, man. Because now our COO, which is uh, Lena, who's our who's our operator, she's high level now. She's just checking in, checking in on the VAs, checking in on the marketing, checking in to make sure that the the acquisition guys are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Now we didn't get there, right? We had to scale up to that, right? And that goes back to what I was saying earlier: is is, and and you know what's crazy is we've been able to we've been able to promote from within. within. I think you got to get at some point as a leader, you got to figure out. Let's say that you maybe it's not even. Sometimes you think you might have the wrong person, but you might have the right person in the wrong seat. That's absolutely right. And so if you can get better as a leader and figure out like. You know, there's something here with this person, but I don't know if I don't want to let him go. Let's give him a shot over here. I think he will work out there. And some people flourish. Like you know, our our, our last CEO, which was Ryan, he was in the integrator role, and he did a he did a good job. He got us to where we needed to get, but there was you know certain things that we wanted him to push and, and, and push him to do, and it just didn't seem like he excelled that. So guess what? Instead of letting him go. He's great at building relationships. So where do you think we put him? Oh, he's networking. Networking, J yeah. J nationwide JV. And that guy, he's crushing it. Yeah. Right? I mean, he's building relationships with agents, buyers all across the country. Um, but I think it, it, it comes down to people, man. The hardest thing is people, you, yeah. know, you know? And so I think you just have to be able to figure out how do you incentivize them? How do you build that golden handcuffs? Right, we call it the golden handcuffs yes. because it does hurt when someone leaves you, right? You, it does, man. especially if you and like it, the person. Yeah, yeah, and, and it hurts in a way that, damn, I gotta start all over. Again. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how many times that happened to me in the last three years, really. That, that I, and we build a culture, but then I probably, you know, the first time I put a large team together, I just had the wrong guys. Yeah. I mean, they were talented, right? but their core values didn't align. Yeah. So they taught me a lot of lessons. A lot of lessons uh, that cost a lot of money, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to get into details of what they did. No, I, 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 you know, I'll be saying, well, last year or this year, I let go of one of my acquisition guys that was going to be with us. It was going to be almost a year. The guy, there was a month where he brought in by himself. I can't remember last year, either August or September. He brought in like close to two hundred thousand wow. dollars by himself, and I had to let him go because what happens? He again. It starts to become a thing where he didn't want certain appointments no more. Oh. He didn't want certain leads, so it was affecting the lead the manager. On the show. Yeah, he was affecting the lead manager. Now the lead manager's got to think twice if he's going to want this lead or he's going to talk crap, whatever the case would be. And I had a conversation with him a couple of times. Hey, what's going on mentally? What, let's talk. Are, are you doing all right? Two conversations, and then he would get back on track a little bit. After the third one, we took a walk and I say, Hey, we're done. Like this is not working. Yeah, and you know, and sometimes it's good for them. You give them wings. Yeah. It's like, hey, man, now you can go do this on your own. You learn how the business yeah, is. Yeah. It was his Here's exit strategy. His exit interview, if, if you call it that, right, was actually a coaching. It was a coaching session for him. Okay. Yeah. So, and he understood. He's like, I get it, man. He goes, I get it. So. Yeah. It's, hey, you got the wings now. Yeah. Go, go do it. You can do this on your but own. But that happens, right? We're we're not immune to that. Type no, no, no. I have to give wings to a great friend this year. Yeah. Like, and and for me, it was. It was painful because he's a friend. It's different, you yeah, know. Like, so, um, 
and then now he's crushing it, which I'm like, dude, I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you, right? Because sometimes what happens is they depend on your on your ability to convert in systems and things like that. And I don't want people to be dependent on me because that's that's not why you build a business. No. You build a business so it can run on its own. Yeah. It can be self-sufficient. Live the lifestyle like Robert, you know Robert? You can live like Robert, <laughs> you know, from Investor Lift, who sponsored the beautiful uh, house. Set. To, uh, yeah, this is giving me a great idea because I'm, I'm thinking we're moving to Miami, Florida next year. Nice. So we're thinking, okay, are we going to do an office? Are we going to do this? Yeah. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rent Airbnbs throughout the city and work out of it with views like this. And yeah. this. Honestly, the only thing I need an office for is for the studio, the podcast studio, yeah. right? But if I make it mobile, then no office needed. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, no. So our team right now, man, it's we're we're running a. Very so how many people team. you have on your team? Total, so, total yeah. including including everybody in the Philippines, in Mexico, so, the whole nine yards. Without the co-owners, because that's not my team directly. Okay. We just use another company for that. Um, in-house and the VAs that they actually work directly for us. I would say it's about 14 people, 15. 14, people. okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, how many are we right now? We're about 20. Yeah, 20. More, more than 20. More than 20. Yeah, so we have seven, six in-house and then uh, the, the VA, the rest are, are the VA team. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And how many cold callers do you guys have on that operation? Right now we have 10 cold callers. We just added another four. Wow, so you're yeah. up to 14. We're up to 14 now. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, because we just, uh, so our co callers are calling Washington and then here in Arizona. So we, we were tapping into the Washington. Where are they located? Uh, they're all over the place. Uh, this company gets them from Egypt. Yeah, uh, Egyptians are good. Yeah, 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 everywhere. And their English is like, they're from here, right? Yeah, it's solid, man. Yeah, I was surprised space. when they said they're from Egypt. I'm like, what? They speak better in English than you and I. <laughs> <laughs> I still have an yeah. accent in it. Yeah, Those guys speak too. really good English. I was surprised. I was like, I called Stratton because he's the owner. I'm like, bro, where are you getting these people? He's like, man, he goes, all over. He goes, I can't tell you. Wow. <laughs> yeah, no, ours are, ours are, we have a company that I haven't actually announced at all. Yeah. It's called Top of the Line VA. After I named it, I regret it because I don't like calling my, my team members VA. I think they're my team members, so I think I'm gonna make a change yeah. and it's gonna be it's gonna be called top of the line TM. TM team members, right? Yeah. Um and we're over we have over all together probably seventy or eighty right now. Yeah. But they're more geared towards texting. Yeah. You know what's crazy is what what set off the light bulb was in COVID, bro, when COVID hit. We lost three acquisition guys. And, 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 and it wasn't uh, a thing of, um, it was, they, they, one guy said he was only gonna be with us a year, he already let us know. The other guy was his friend, so he left. And then the third guy, he learned it a little bit and he thought he could go. And what happened, and, and it was just myself and another guy, Ruben, who Ruben was with us for two and a half years. Wow. And it was just me and him. And so what we realized was that, and those guys are crushing it, by the way. Those those three guys, like shout out. They're yeah, they're they're crushing it. Hey, that's great to see people that you were working with, and now they're, they're they grow right yeah. into into the next level. Yeah. Um, because we're, we all deserve to grow. Yeah. You know, even I tell my my team members, people on my team, I said, look, guys, I want you guys to be making a gazillion of dollars every month if that's what you really want to do. I don't want to put a ceiling on, on yeah. your potential. Yeah. But keep in mind, if you're gonna come work with us and you wanna hit that, you know, go all in, you're gonna put your marketing dollars to work, yeah. you're gonna hire your own platform, you're gonna get your own VA, you're gonna you know you're gonna learn how to pay for systems. Right. And you can do it within our team. By the way, Caesar is the best example. Nice. Caesar every month he's got his own VA, he's got his own platform, he puts his marketing dollars to work. I don't tell him what he needs to do or whatnot, I just coach him on yeah. hey you're doing this wrong or, or pick this market or whatever. Um, and it's funny because he's never talked to a seller. He's talked to some buyers because he did some dispositions with us when yeah. he started. And he's making five figures a month right now. Nice. Without talking to sellers or buyers. Because he's using the team we have, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's about using all the infrastructure you have in place. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know if you guys do it that way. Um, we don't yet. Um, so going back to the, what I was saying about the light bulb going off during COVID was like, we need to figure out a way for us, like where these guys 
there's an upside to them because we didn't have an upside. It was we were paying them high commission, which is twenty percent, which is unheard of. Awful. Which is unheard of. That's a lot of money. Right? But but we didn't have the systems that we did and everything. So they were they were part time cold calling, part time getting these through text. So we that's one thing that Steve and I said we need to do something to where these guys are long term where we can keep them in an upside. Um, so we, what we did is we re changed the comp plan before we started hiring people, lowered the commission structure, and they gave an opportunity to buy assets and also participate in cash right. flow too. So like if we if the company buys a property that uh, say a creative deal right and it's going to cash flow or keep it as a rental, we don't decide to wholesale it. So they they participate on that cash flow every single month. That's it's not right. a lot. It's a hundred bucks a month. But well, if they do ten, is. yeah, if they do ten. That's a thousand dollars a month that they're getting. Yeah. Now you out. share the you share the responsibility. Yeah. Because it's it's not one person looking after a property. I tried that in the past, and it worked for a little bit um, with Juan and Lauren. Yeah. But then they went separate directions, and that's when it didn't work. Yeah. So so everything the way we the way we structure it is long long as you're under. Our company, you're working with us. You're still side by side with us, or you get to participate. Obviously, all the, everything gets um, put under our company name. So if they were to leave, it's just a straight wash. You know, they don't longer get that revenue. Anymore. Got it. Yeah. But do they have to put money into the deal? Well, I mean, the time they don't get paid on a commission. Well, no. In my case, they were putting money on the deal. Yeah. I see. So yeah. you know, they when they left, they were, when I said it's okay, whatever you're into it, I'm yeah. just gonna honor that yeah. and pay you. I think. Both. So that thing, that, um, and then the other thing too is when I started, when when we started hiring more guys, one thing that I always tell them, look, here's what's happened in the past. We had guys come in. I'm up front, bro. Like, I will tell them in the interview, this interview sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I will. I told actually we I actually can't recently, do that, bro. bro. Actually, did, recently I had a guy. He gave he gave Steve a bad review. I saw that. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? That was me that interviewed him. I was like, what is wrong with this guy? I told them towards the end of the interview. I said, hey, you know what, Ricardo, this interview is not going well. I think we should end. Wow. And he was like, what do you mean? Because the guy thought he was like the shit. Yeah, yeah. He his ego he was, was ego was high. Like his ego was coming out of his ears, bro. Wow. I said, you're definitely gonna fit. But I tell him, I, I, I'm very forward and I always say, look, I know at some point, because I understand the personality that we hire, you're gonna possibly want to go on your own. I said, but what I will tell you is give us 12 months. I don't say a year, because 12 months now we're talking in months, right? I mean, that's in college. Yeah. Give us 12 months. So you can dedicate yourself to learning the sales process because the sales is just the, the spear on the, on the arrow. You got all the other stuff all the way back to the feather. Absolutely. And so give us 12 months, you learn the sales process, and then in 12 months, so we get that, we get that, that we get that commitment for 12 months. Now, obviously we don't sign anything, but we do get that verbal commitment from them that we'll, they'll be here with us 12 months. And we've yeah, you can't thing. force anything no, no. to stay 12 months. Yeah, and so, so far, the guys that are with us, I've had that conversation. And uh, they're already hitting a year and a half because they understand that there's more to learn besides the sales, the sales aspect of it. Yeah. yeah so, so the one thing that's, that works for me, uh, for our group, um, is that I I allow our team members to do their own marketing. I like that. Hey, yeah. But it's your money. Yeah. It's your risk taking. It's not my risk. You use your tools. You're gonna get your own texting or whatever platform. And Caesar is taking advantage of that. Um, we had other guys that came on the team, but they wouldn't take advantage of it. And Caesar was like, "I don't understand why they don't do it." Yeah. And I was like, "Well, they have they have a, a risk." Yeah, of course. They're a risk adverse. So it's so, funny. What, funny what happens when people have uh, skin in the game, huh? Yes. <laughs> so I like that because yeah. if they put skin on the game, that means they're committed. Yeah, that means they're committed. Right, let's go. Hey, now you know. I don't make them do it right away. They they can wait. Get the first deal to get to get the you know situated or whatever, but I want them to do it on their own because number one, that's another JV opportunity for me because they got to do it in, in the house. Like yeah. you can't just be your own deal on your right, own. Right, right. If you're gonna use a team, guess what? The team is mine as well. So yeah. it, everything has to come through the house. So Caesar and I closed on a deal this week, right? And what we did is from 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 the whole assignment, we took the first the commissions from the top, allocated them to the agents. And the rest was split in half and half. Nice. Done. I love that. And you do, how many times can you do that in a month? Oh, yeah. A lot. Yeah. And now the acquisitions agents, the Dispo agents, are not only working for me, they're working for him as well, they're yeah. working for you. Yep. Dude, we're doing this with a bunch of guys nationwide now. Nice. And the process, it's, you know, it's creating volume that I always knew existed. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know how to type into it. Yeah. 
so so those assignments that I showed you earlier is part of it is because of that. Yeah. So we have a, a new system that, that is all virtual. We still handle things in the office. We guide them. This yeah, is yeah. what we do. But we're not. I don't want to grow a team in house again to where yeah. I have to be on top of these guys yeah. or whatnot. I found out that you know, even the most the people that got the best operations, they, they still have that revolving door. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. That's not the case overseas yeah. because overseas these guys are framed to be workers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're very risk adverse. Right. And they're hungry. Yeah. And as long as you pay them well, yeah, they're not going anywhere. Yeah, no, uh, RBAs, uh, because we, so it's funny, so the, because we have a CEO that looks, overlooks the other VAs, uh, she's the, uh, the, the, uh, runs running them, right. checking on them, so she started as a texter, uh, this was three years ago, and I saw something and I'm like, man, she has something here, because she picked up the texting, the conversations, like, she was fast, and they're sharp people, and you're right, all they do is know how to work, they don't complain, they don't, they don't, you know, talk back, and they follow instructions. Is she the one I talked to? Ira. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember her. So she elevated now yeah. to CEO. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Shout so, out to Ira. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I'm sure yeah. this so uh, that way she can see it. Um, but yeah, so now she's running it and, and, and you know, her life has changed. Wow. She bought herself a car, goes to, takes her family Bro, that, that's, that's what it's all about, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, our, in our case, we have, we're, we're, we have the same case. We have uh, Mariana. This, check this out. So there was a guy, shout out to Matthew. Matthew came on our platform and he asked me for a VA. So Mariana was coming up brand new. Yeah. We, we gave Mariana to him. And I can see everybody's stuff, yeah, yeah. right? And I can tell this guy is getting leads left and right. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm, why is he getting more leads than the rest, right? And I realized it was the, the, the girl, Mariana, yeah, running, right, right. Right, doing the lead generation. Yep. And he was happy with her, like very happy. At some point, he got the shiny object syndrome and he moved from texting to PPC. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I get it, you know, the PPC leads are, are looking for you. Yeah, of course. So there's not that much nurture that you have to do. It's like they just want a price on a property pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And a way to solve the challenge. So he called me and said, hey, Ricardo, um, I'm gonna cancel my my assistant because uh, I'm going full blown PPC, and I was the happiest guy that day. Because <laughs> as soon as he let her go, you brought her back in. I, I went, hey, now you work with me, and you're not going anywhere. <laughs> so she started texting. Then from texting uh, for leads, I moved her to texting for uh, buyers. Mm -hmm. From texting for buyers, I moved her to junior dispo. From junior dispo, we moved her to junior acquisitions. Then she went up to senior acquisitions. Nice. Senior dispos, go back to acquisitions because I'm making sure she knows. Yeah, 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 the whole aspect. Of all of it. Yeah. And hopefully soon she'll she'll be over nice. both teams. Nice. Um, beautiful. But this is somebody that that someone else. Yeah. Uh, Cancel on her. Up. And I was like, yeah. Oh man, you. So you know, I remember was working for somebody else too. She, but she wasn't growing. She was very. They kept her where she was at. I met her initially. She didn't accept my first offer. She's like, no, she, because you know they're very dedicated yes. and loyal. So then, um, then I said, okay, that's fine. We'll have a conversation six months from now, and uh, just casual conversation, like, hey, how's it going? You know, because she still worked for us, but through another company. Right. And you know how they're treat you know just casual conversation and how are you growing you know as a leader because they want to grow too they're humans right at the end of the day most what most people don't realize so we had that conversation and she was struggling like Max I'm not growing and here's what's going on I said oh okay tell me more about that <laughs> so so how can I help you grow? yeah yeah uh, how can I help you grow what do we what how, what would you like to do and so yeah she told us she told me everything what she wanted to do and I was like perfect how about we can do that man and you know what I love my people. Like I want every single one of my team members to grow yeah. as, as high as they can. I had this la this lady, uh, 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 this girl. She she was she's badass. I mm -hmm. mean, she's no longer with us, but I still think she's freaking awesome, right? And what I think one of the mistakes I made with her is I I I, I pushed her up too fast, and when she got all that responsibility, yeah. something was off, and she she quit. Yeah, wow. And. And me and Cesar sometimes we have these conversations like, man, what the hell is she thinking? Like, 
literally, we were we were putting her in a position to make a ton of money. Wow. Uh, and and she just said one day, no, I can't do this anymore. Like it's it's conflicting with my personal life and this and that. So I was like, okay, you yeah, know, I'm sorry, but I don't want to see you go. But but she she left. Um, and uh, so it happens too that you you help people yeah, yeah, yeah. grow up and yeah, they're not ready. They're not ready. They're not ready for it. And I don't recognize that. Yeah. So I, I I should have I guess. Yeah. Uh, I should not ever like I like what you said earlier about getting to know their goals. I think that's something I, I need to do more. Yeah. Because even though I get to know them personally, yeah, I don't know really what their goals are. They want to do the yeah. yeah. So uh, that's that's one takeaway from me on, on this conversation that we had. Nice. So Max, let's go back real quick to disruptors training. Yep. What do you guys teach them? So in 2018, uh, what we decided, because I, I love sales, I've always loved sales. Um, I have a passion for it, right? But what happens, a lot of people think that just because you're a good people person or you have good people skills that you're good at sales, right? Right. Most people. Um, which that was my original thought too as well. You know, I was like, I know how to talk, I know how to hold a conversation. But there's levels, like there's another level that you can yeah. go to. So in 2018, uh, we joined a, a, a training program that uh, Steve and I started going to. Right. And uh, man, it changed not only our business, but our lives in general, because, um, you know, it's just the way they taught sales. They, they taught the psychology of sales. Because I'm, I'm a big believer that 80% of, 80% is, is a mental, right? It's mindset in sales and 20% is tactic. That's why you see like, dealerships, our business, any type of sales business, the revolving door is always ongoing and right. stop, right? Because you can teach tactics, but if that person doesn't believe, you know, what they're saying internally, they're going to struggle and they're not going to be able to uh, apply it or, 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 do, or uh, get sales closings, right? Right. So that program not only taught us, but, you know, rewired us, right? Right. Like head trash, get, get the head trash out of us. But also taught us tactics. So I like that head trash. Yeah, head trash. I'm gonna, I'm actually doing something. I want to write. I don't know if it's gonna be a book yet, or I'm gonna do a, uh, something where where I'm, where I'm gonna teach nothing but psychology of sales. Because I, I more than anything than tactics, I love the psychology of sales. Got it. Why you do something. But going back to what I was saying, so the thing is though, we learned, that was the books, right? We were learning that, but we went and applied it to real estate. So there's a couple individuals that have that had that same training, right? Um, but they never went out and applied it like we did. We went out and got our face kicked, right? I was going to maybe one, two, three appointments a day in 2019 right. when we first started this. So I would come back, I was sales training twice a week. Sometimes I would even go three times a week uh, just so I can, and that's where I build my scripts, uh, our scripts, our texting templates, and basically our sales process. Not only did we learn it from the book, but we also tailored it to what we were doing, which was real estate. Um, so then in 20, I would say towards the end, of, so that was 2018 beginning, and then towards the end of 2019, once we built it out to where it was working for us, we decided, hey, why not let's, let's have other people learn this style as well too. And so that's when we created the Disruptor Sales Training. That's what came out of that. Awesome, yeah. man. Yeah. Um, well, shout out to Steve Trang. Yeah. Uh, but I to answer your question, like what, what, what do we teach there is, we teach, um, you know, you, you know how it is, right? You go to a sales appointment. Yeah. And what are some of the objections that you get? The biggest ones are always, you know, I gotta think about it. I gotta talk to my wife. Yeah, I gotta talk to my wife. I gotta talk oh, to my, my husband. husband. I gotta talk to my pastor, my attorney, whoever, right? Whoever, so there's always somebody that people have to talk to. I gotta think about it. Then the other thing too that happens a lot is, is too many salesmen talk themselves out of a deal. Yes. Yeah, even though when you have the closing, they still want to add that, on. That's why I believe introvert people are better at, at, yeah. at, in this business than 100%. extroverts. Yeah, we used to have, an, the industry standard things that they gotta hire, what's called the maverick personality. I'm one of those. That's me. That's me, yeah, me I'm too. A maverick. Yeah, so so because you know, a maverick will come in and they'll get your sales up. But once they get the sales up, they're not gonna they don't wanna follow the structure anymore. No. Right? But the difference with me is that I know that that structure is gonna help me win. So my desire to win outweighs the desire not to follow the structure. That's why I got really good at, at following this uh, this this process. So then, uh, so then, those are the two objections. Right? I got that in the military. Yeah, did you? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. military is 
literally step by step by step, but you don't, you, you can not deviate. You can deviate. Yeah. So I got for four years, but that's all I did. So <laughs> now it's in my DNA. Yeah. But I am a maverick. Right. And I completely understand what yeah. being on a box means. For yeah. me, it's like, oh, yeah, I get desperate, you know? Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so we teach that. We teach you how to have a sales framework, a sales process. Uh, and then there's a, there's a six steps to that sales process that you can uh, well, yeah. check out this yeah. book. Hey, yeah. no sponsorship here or nothing. We just believe it's a great book for yeah, yeah, yeah. For it's a real story. About. And so, and then, and, and basically, how to run appointments correctly, how to talk to sellers, um, you know, um, how to overcome, you know, objections. You know, one thing I learned is that objections are not objections; they're just stalls, right? Because at the end of the day, a lot of people don't know how to overcome certain things. Because I always tell everybody. We do this once to five to ten times a month. These people are doing it once to twice in their lifetime. Right. And so their objections are not necessarily objections, they just don't have the lack of information. They don't have that information. Right. And what happens, you get another salesperson that comes in, educates them to a point where now they become overwhelmed and don't realize like, I don't want to do this shit. Like right. this is not me. So we take the the other side of that is like why are we here? You know, we take the more the the, ther the what is it the therapist side, right? Yeah. So, and, and get them to tell us why we should buy your house. That's awesome, man. So, <laughs> well, Max, thank you so much for coming yeah, today, of course, Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate you. It. We it's could good. be doing this for hours. <laughs> really, guys, we could be talking for hours. Uh, we we've actually been talking for hours. Yeah, we have been <laughs> since early this morning. So. Anyhow, guys, don't forget to hit share, like, and subscribe. Where can people follow you, Max? So, easiest place is uh, on Instagram, at Real Max Jimenez. Uh, at Real Max Jimenez, you can DM me. I'm very active. Um, also on YouTube, uh, Max Jimenez. I drop a lot of content, sales content on, on YouTube. So Awesome. Don't forget to hit share, like, and subscribe, guys. Attendgrowth.com, June 24th, 25th, and 26th, 2022, guys. This is coming around in about a month and a half. We only have about 100 tickets left on the general admission side. VIP is only like 15 now. So um, if you want to hang out with Max and a bunch of other rock stars that are coming to our event in Houston, it's going to be very uh, information driven. So uh, this is not a pitch fest. We're not going to be pitching you on, on, on the next course, in, uh, you know, coaching program or whatnot. We all have coaching programs, by the way. Yeah. Uh, but it's not, this is not a pitch fest. It's more about networking. Let's get together. Let's collaborate. How can we work with each other? And how can we serve you? So that's literally why I put this, because I really want to serve um, our community and, and, and bring the best of the best, which I believe we're bringing the best of the best um, to our yeah, life. Like man. man, I look at it. It is. It, it's, uh, so be there or be square. Absolutely, man. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bendecida, Joana, bendecido yo de que te tengo aquí hoy día. Eh, te invité a podcast unos meses atrás y tú me dijiste, Ricardo, no estoy lista, porque no tengo. Tomando unas cosas para algo especial que Dios tiene en el camino para nosotros. Eh, pero llegamos y llegamos a nosotros. Pero por delante. No están poniendo la relación por delante, no están poniendo como yo construyo puente. Es dinero que es para mí, que entonces. O sea, yo cuando llegué, este, porque llegué con un grupo de Movimiento Nacional Latino y había otras personas que querían.